All right, here I am with a couple of mason jars, some dish soap, and a garden trowel. And uh, you may as well stick around and see what I'm going to do with them. Hey, it's Jason here with Fraser Valley Rose Farm. I'm sure the title ruined the suspense of what I'm going to do today. It's a mason jar soil test to check for clay in my soil. What I want to show you here is that my soil is quite heavy. During the summer, it's clayish enough that when it dries out, it starts to develop those big cracks in the surface. So I treat it as a clay soil. I grow things in here that are appropriate for it, but I want to show you how to do the actual physical test to see if it is a clay soil. What I'm gonna do here, just to take off the organic stuff across the top, I'm just gonna scrape off the top there because having a big chunk of wood in the jar isn't gonna tell me anything. Next thing I'm gonna do is dig down in here and reveal the soil. And into the jar it goes. You can see from the surface of the soil there how smooth that is and it's heavy and it sticks together which is my first indication that this is a clayish type soil. I'm going to keep on getting soil samples everywhere from around the region of that. It's best to mix it in a little bit. Hopefully get, don't just get one little piece of soil from one part of the hole, but go ahead and get a real representative sample. What I'd like to have for this kind of test is even up to about half the jar and I'll take that in and show you how to prepare it inside there. And I wanna go get one more sample, so follow me. Here in a very different spot in our garden, I want to get a different soil sample because I know from experience that this place is a little bit rockier, a little bit sandier. So may as well take a sample, run the test there at the same time. Yeah, you can feel there. Already I can feel there's gravel in there. There's rocks and that kind of thing in there. I'll sort that out a bit inside. <clears throat> but I have a feeling that this is going to come up a little bit different as a result. All right, the next step in our mason jar test for soil is to break up the soil a little bit. So I took the first sample here, the more clayish sample from my estimation, and I've dumped it out into this bin here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break it up. And part of the getting the best results is to have it completely dissolved into the water solution. So the more you can break it up now and shake it up once you get it into the jar, it should be fine. You can see this one here is pretty homogenous. That is, all of the parts are pretty clayish and pretty much the same consistency. And so I don't have too many bits of rock or anything that looks quite different from the soil here. But once I have it all dissolved into the water and shake it up and let it settle down, you should actually see some distinctions between the sandier and the siltier and the clay type particles that are in there. So I'm gonna put it back into the jar and we'll do the next step in the test. This one is the second sample from the other jar. And I just wanted to show you as I break this one up here that it's not quite as homogenous. You can see I've got some big chunks of rock in here. And you can actually hear that there's a little more gravel in this soil here. Now, I don't think it's gonna help me out a lot to determine the soil texture to have these big chunks of rock in there. So I will screen those out before I put that back in the jar. But this is what the second soil looks like before I begin the soil test. Here's the next step is I'm gonna add just a little bit of dish soap, less than a teaspoon into each jar. That's just to help to uh, dissolve and suspend and divide the layers 
and then add some water almost to the top you just want to leave a little bit of room on the top for shaking and for the second sample same deal I'm going to apply the lids here. You can see that this one used to be apparently peaches from August of 2015. And the next step here, I may take a little while to shake it up. So I might go off camera on that, but the point being that the more thoroughly this is mixed, the more suspended each of the types of soil becomes in the solution, then when I set it down, it will divide. So the first thing I have to do is shake it up. I'm gonna do that to both here now, and I'll turn this back on in a second. I've given these a couple minutes of shaking now, and I actually wanted to show you something kind of interesting. This was the first sample from that clayish spot I showed you. And you can hear, as I'm shaking it, a little rattling as one or two pieces of sand or gravel in the bottom rattle around. This is the second sample from the sandier location. I don't know if you can pick that up. But it's definitely a lot more gravel. So this is the fun part of the test. You can see that from the time I set it down, almost immediately, any gravel or sand that's in that suspension drops to the bottom. So what you see settling at the bottom there after five seconds even, 10 seconds, is all the sand and gravel in that solution have dropped out. This one here as well. So I'm not gonna be able to tell anything quite yet. The timeline goes like this. In the first five or 10 seconds, all the sand and gravel drops out. Then over the course of the next 30 minutes, you should see all of the silt drop out but you might not even get a distinct line there because all of the clay that's in that top portion there will still be suspended in the water. And so it's gonna take 24 hours or more for all that clay to drop down into the third layer. What I'll do then is I'll take a new video for both of these samples here, and I'll show you how much ends up being sand, how much end up, ends up being silt, and in the top layer, how much ends up being clay. Step two in my artificial time lapse here, it's now been about 30 minutes since I shook the jars. And within the first five minutes, I took a Sharpie here and I marked down the rough edge of the sand layer. See, it's a little bit lower in the first jar here than it is in the second jar. And the next layer up here, settling within about the first 30 minutes, should be the silt layer. I'm not gonna mark that quite yet, because I think it may have some more settling to go down there as the water separates from the silt. And this top portion here contains some silt and some clay that will settle out within the next 24 hours or so. And that should be the next section I take. This is the results video. You know, I've had these sitting here for about a week actually is what it came out to uh, just cause I got busy with other things. And you can see that the water at the top of the jars has cleared up significantly. It took a long time for that, for all the clay particles in there to drop down and form those clay layers at the top of the jar there. So this is the results and I'll show you how to calculate that and where to go to get the texture. So what I did is I put a little mailer down at the bottom here because the mason jars don't go right down to the surface. And on this first sample here, what I found after 
doing the uh, doing the calculations uh, and the counts here is that your total height on that was about 63 millimeters of which sand was 22 silt was around 30 and clay was around 11. I did the same thing on the other jar the sample from the rockier soil and what I found there was that of a total of 61 millimeters about 30 was sand 25 was silt and only six was clay so then the question becomes what does that mean and if you're trying to figure out what the um, what the scientific classification of your texture is here's a website i'll actually post it along the bottom where you can just insert the percentages now the percentages you would get by taking each of those layers uh, depth and dividing it by the total so for instance on this first sample here to get the percentage of sand of uh, 22 was the layer divided by 63 gives me a percentage of approximately 35 percent and you can put that into the calculator at 35 percent sand uh, put in your clay percentage and uh, it will calculate out the silt percentage for you and give you uh, a texture classification and in this case it put me right on the border of a loam or a silt loam now should that surprise me actually if you just ask me without doing the test like this how does my soil behave? Is it heavy? Is it light? Does it drain and everything else? The answer I'd give you is, well, it acts a bit like a clay. And uh, what I mean by that is it's, it's heavy, it's hard to dig, it's uh, cool in the spring and takes a long time to warm up, that it's, uh, when it dries out, it gets those cracks across the top. Uh, so it acts a lot like a clay soil and it is very fertile and moisture retentive and everything else but when you actually take the textural analysis it ends up being a silt loam this one over here by the same process and remember that one was the one that had a lot of chunky rocks in it as i dug it out from the garden and uh, if you do the analysis on that one it ends up being just straight in the area of category of loam on the sandy side but this one here would need probably about 10% more clay to be considered a clay soil. And this one would need probably about 5% more sand to be considered even a sandy loam. So both of these are in the kind of loam category. And, but they actually, even within that group, have a lot of differences between them. So I guess my takeaway on this is you don't really know the specific, well, at least the scientific texture of your soil uh, until you do a test like this. And it could be helpful in knowing uh, how, how to treat it and what amendments you could use and so on. Uh, if you have any questions about how this went or about the test or anything else or comments, uh, please leave them below. Thank you.